Hello and welcome to Moment Photography. This video is going to be about my Canon MPE 65mm macro lens. Now I have talked about this macro lens in a previous video, but I'm going to talk about it again today because I wanted to touch on how to use different lighting with this lens. Now I'm not saying I'm an expert at using uh, different lighting with this lens, but this is what I've experimented with. Um, now I am aware that there is a Canon dedicated uh, macro flash which you can attach onto here and then there's a, a load of gubbins up here where you can do your settings and your batteries and everything. But I think it's like about 700 or 1000 pounds, something crazy. So I thought, well, I think I've actually got some suitable lighting that I can use, which isn't that expensive and I've already bought it anyway. Uh, maybe I can adapt that to suit this lens. So you would have seen in the previous video, what I did was I got a just a regular flash gun. So this is a Canon 580EX2 flash gun. It's been out a few years now, actually, this, this one. So you could probably pick them up secondhand if not too much, or even a Mark I version would be fine. And then what I did was I bought one of these on eBay. Now I've just put an, added an elastic band here and uh, you know, and then I've put some elastic on the top. So the reason for that is because I wanted to attach this and use it as a diffuser. And, and if you don't have the elastic, it just kind of flops around a bit more. So I'm gonna quickly try and put this on. So snap that around there. And then this will also go down here. So it's still not ideal, but it will at least stay kind of in place and what I've tended to do is when I'm you know taking my photos I'll just kind of with this hand hold the diffuser so it, it just kind of bows over a little bit so you get the light kind of going a bit more where you want it rather than it might just go more outwards rather than down so that's actually worked pretty well and uh, I've used that for lots of photos which I'll be showing throughout this video um, but I was finding that certain times didn't seem to work quite as well. So I thought, you know, maybe I need to work on how I can get this light closer to where the actual subject matter is. So uh, this is one idea. And then the next thing I moved on to, I'll just move these bits out of the way, was to using a Godox flash. So this is a Godox AD200, which is a really good piece of kit. And one of the advantages compared to um, this flash is that this has got, this is a great flash, but it's got quite limited power, um, at least in the sense of it takes a long time to recycle if you're using, at, using it at full power. And because I did have the flash, uh, you know, sat here, the flash is quite a long way away from where you are illuminating. And because I tend to cut out all the ambient light, then that will mean that you're relying totally on the flash and it requires more power to be used. So if you're using that much power, it's gonna take longer to recycle. Now, if you've got a much more powerful flash, like a Godox AD200, which has got a lithium battery, plenty of power in there. I think these AD200s, I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. I think these AD200s are about three or four times the power of your Canon 580EX2. So you can get a much quicker recycle time and, and you know miss less photos. So I'm just gonna slot in this battery pack here and see if I can rig this up. I'll probably have to speed up this footage a bit whilst I do this. Now, let's see. Or I might just cut to the end. Okay, so it's a bit of work to get it to this point. Uh, a lot of fiddling about with various uh, different um, adjustment knobs and things, but this is um, the setup that I came up with. Now, it's not ideal, uh, but it is 
uh, in some ways an improvement on the previous uh, rig that I showed you. So previously we had the flash where the head is all the way up here whereas this now the flash head is right down here. So you've got um, two things, you've got the increased power output from uh, this flash so it's going to recycle quicker but also because the flash is closer you won't need to use as much power anyway so you can really like take multiple pictures very quickly and I have actually put the camera on multi-frame so I can go like that and get lots of shots very quick whereas if I was using this flash I probably wouldn't really be able to do that or would have to raise the ISO a lot or something like that so uh, with this rig um, one thing you can do which is quite nice is if I adjust this so I can uh, actually adjust the angle I mean again it's not it's not perfect you know with the uh, dedicated macro flash you've got the flashes right here and you can angle those and turn them and things so this is you know not as good as that but I have got other ideas which I'll sh also show you in this video but when it comes to extending this flash to about three or four times magnification then that's when this setup is probably most ideal um, because you're kind of in the general sort of area of where the flash should be. So this currently is on three times the magnification. And if I go to four, you're there. So there you are starting to get, um, you know, uh, you get a bit of shadow. So I'd have to adjust, adjust this like that. Now, because it's still kind of shooting over the top, then what I did then is I've got um, this here, which I'll just quickly attach. No, no. Right, so this is just a, a piece of Velcro and it's got some rubber on the back of it so it sits in place. So you can just put that on there as like a you know a bounce card to try and get some of that light to bounce downwards. And then I also used something else as well. So I've got another piece of Velcro and then this is going to go on here like this. So you can kind of have this shroud, if you like, and you're just trying to get that light in the right place. And, um, you know, for some shots that worked out pretty well. Um, for others, it didn't seem to work quite so well. Um, so I'll show you now, via some pictures, another setup that I came up with. I think it was actually, that's right, it was actually before this one where I had two of these flashes um, that are pointing in, in this area and um, it it was okay but it was very heavy so I had to move away from that idea as well. Okay so I'm now going to quickly deconstruct this one and move on to the next design. This is quite a tight fit here with this bracket. So this is the bracket that came with the Godox. I'm just going to Take this off. Okay, so we now kind of have this Frankenstein set up, and uh, it's in some ways similar to the previous that um, I'm using this tripod mount on the lens I've turned it around and I'm using that to mount on various uh, different brackets and things and um, the way I've done it this way is that I've taken a lot of that weight away I mean I've still got some weight on top because I've had to put these different brackets on so that's added a bit of weight but most of the weight has been taken away because this is quite a hefty piece whereas these although they've got some weight they're not as heavy um, but what is quite neat with this is that I've got a number of different points of, ang of angling it so I've got this lever here so I can angle that like that now, of course, by having so many points, it does mean that you've got also a number of points which are trying to undo themselves all the time. So I'm just going to readjust this. And uh, then we've got uh, this one here. So I can angle that as well. 
Now, obviously, at the moment, it's way out of out of whack. Um, but then I've also got a button on the side of this of this um, attachment up here, which I can angle precisely. Now, this uh, this setup here um, is a rather a nifty attachment to the Godox eighty two hundred flash. Um, so if I just take this off a moment. Okay, so what it means is that you can take the weight, which is this, um, away from the point at where the light is being emitted. So if you've got a lighting stand and you want the weight to be lower down, you can, you can use this. Or I've thought that I could have this set up on the end of a monopod and I could hold it out of one hand and use a camera in the other and have this, you know, um, dangling from my belt or maybe it could be resting on the ground depending on how high I hold this up. But it's quite a long lead though. So currently I've got this system which I'm, which I'm using and having fun with. So I attach that on there and then uh, I, can't, I think I bought this separately, this diffuser. And uh, I can just add this on here, or slot in, and then you tie it up on the side. Now this is, you know, quite light. You have got a bit of a big cable, but that's not too much of a bother. And then I can slot that on there in a, like a cold shoe uh, attachment. And uh, let's see. All right, needs a bit of tightening up there, I think. Okay. So then obviously I want to get the, the flashlight closer down here so I can use a number of different adjustment levers for that. So it's just a case of playing around a bit really, Again, adjusting the one that works best. So maybe a bit more down there. So that's not too bad. and. This obviously is a nice large diffused area. I mean, it's, it's obviously a very small diffuser, but when you're lighting something which is so tiny because it's macro, it ends up being a very large um, softbox, if you like. So um, that, that works out really well. And this would be much larger than um, the dedicated macro flash diffusion panels. So, you know, in theory, I would get a softer light. So I have taken some pictures with this setup and it's worked pretty well. Um, now, if I want to change my magnification, currently I'm on, that's that's three times there. So I really need to wiggle this around a little bit. It's all a bit disjointed, but if I go to four times, then obviously that's way off. So I'm gonna need two. Something like that. Now I'm actually slightly off this way a bit at the moment. So, there we go. So it's a bit better. And also I'm a little bit wonky there. So there, that's, that's pretty good. And I could go to five times. I think that, I think that worked more or less. So it's not, I really would like that to be kind of flat, um, flat like there, but it's a bit of an angle, but I think that's still gonna be okay, you know, nice overhead light, you know, like it's being lit from the sky or something. Um, so that works pretty well. So um, I've been quite excited about this setup because it's relatively lightweight. Um, it's fairly well balanced, as long as you support the lens underneath then you know you should be okay to just have this lying on the ground and get some great shots. So as you can see this uh, Godox flash is quite versatile. I mean actually much like this is a versatile flash too, um, but obviously you've got more power with this one and possibly more attachments, I don't know. But um, so this is how uh, a few different ways I've been using my Godox flash with the flash being on the camera and all fixed in place and you can you know adjust it by these um, adjustment knobs and things. But another way of using it, I'll show you now. So I'll just uh, take all this apart. Okay, so 
I've now just um, I've now separated the uh, flash and the diffuser from the camera, so it's no longer fixed on there. So if I wanted to, what I could do is hold the camera with one hand, you know, look through, and then I could adjust the angle of where I want the flash just by holding it like this. Now, arguably, you could say, well, you could do the same thing really with a flash gun, and uh, possibly because it is so close, then you know you wouldn't need as much power, so it would recycle faster. So, you know, I'm still experimenting with different ideas, and you know, I may well indeed try and use this. Um, uh, by disconnecting it, you know, from the hot shoe of the camera, you can get a cable which you can, you know, attach to the hot shoe and then attach that to the flash, so you can move it around. You don't have to use a wireless system, which is you know a bit more expensive and potentially unreliable. Um, so you know, it'd be very cheap just to to use this flash and you know on a cable and, and do that. Um, but I have also. Uh, use this Godox flash in a different way. So as I said, I've tried like this uh, with this diffuser, which again is relatively going to be relatively large to the subject, so you get a nice soft light. But you could go one further and use um, this softbox here. Now this is actually this is a Godox accessory. I don't think it was very much. I mean, most Godox products are pretty affordable. Um, now this, you know, it's kind of a bit ridiculous, really. You don't want to be. Let me give you a demonstration here. I want to put this on here. Okay. So I think it's safe to say this. This would seem a bit ridiculous. You know, doing this, you're in some um, some nice gardens with flowers somewhere and looking out for bugs and whatnot and you, you know like the taking pictures like this look a bit of an idiot but I did use this setup though at home so I'll insert a video now of when I did use that setup and you can see the sort of results that I got. Okay so I've, I've got a little setup here um, you can see I've got a diffuser which is attached to an AD200 um, Godox flash. I was taking pictures outside earlier, it's quite a nice day, and I found this um, lily beetle, it's also called a scarlet beetle I think, because it's bright red, and um, they've been munching away on my lilies, so I thought well I might as well get some de decent pictures out of it if you're going to be munching away on my plants. But I brought it in and I put it on just on a bamboo cane, I mean this is all like really like oh quick grab it you know see if I can get some photos I'll put it back afterwards um so you know I haven't got like a perfect environment it was just put it on a long cane so if it walks I can follow it and get some pictures of it but amazingly it's just been sat here completely still I've taken loads of pictures of it and I didn't certainly didn't expect that I'd be able to even get you know a little video of me explaining what I'm doing um I didn't expect it to be sat here for so long because I found one earlier on and that actually flew off as, as I was trying to take this photo. So this one's been really great. Now, as you can see, I've got a little bit of green hanging behind and it's actually the wrapper of a milk carton, believe it or not. And it's not the perfect thing to put behind, but again, I was like, how long is this bug gonna sit here for? It might just go any minute. So just quickly grab something. And because I'm all a bit cramped up here, it wasn't easy to find something green I could prop up that would stay in place. So I've just clipped this, clipped this um, bit of packaging onto the diffuser. And um, it has been working all right, actually. It's not ideal. Um, I'd rather have like a plant or something behind it. But this will do for now. So I've got the, the flash here and um, I'm just going to take a few shots. Now I'm going to steady myself by resting against this unit which I'm um, knelt next to I can still you know I can still get a bit of movement and I won't get camera shake in the photo because it's the flash which is going to freeze the image um, if it was just using ambient light you know daylight um, the duration that the uh, photo be taken and the camera shake you know it, it would it would cause you to get blur so because the flash is going to be going off for like thousandths of a second or something, it's going to freeze it. Um, but also because I've cut out all the ambient light to avoid that blur from, you know, motion blur, it does mean that the background is basically black. 
So that's why I've got that green in there, but the green's gonna be quite close because if it's too far away, it's not gonna be picked up. So um, this flash is only illuminating a really small area. And um, so that's, you know, hence why it's so close. So anyway, I'll just take a few shots and I'll, I'll show you as best I can afterwards. You probably won't be able to see the screen terribly well. So what I'll do is I'll insert, you know, some pictures in this video. But anyway, let's take a few shots. So it's actually, because it's four times magnification, it's actually really quite hard to even find this beetle. There it is. Just happily sat there. So there's a few shots. Perfect, right. Now, that, actually that one's a bit out of focus, that's a bit better. It's really hard, it's really hard to get the eye in focus. I mean, you really, the depth of field I'm dealing with here is probably about f three to five millimeters. So really tiny amount. So I'm trying to be careful how much I move back and forth so I keep it in focus. Hence me resting on this unit here. So it's not all about this sort of shake I'm worried about, it's more that just positioning myself properly because even if um, I, I've dealt with the camera shake by you know the flash and the no ambient light, I've still got to deal with this incredibly small depth of field. So I don't know how well you can see, but um, there is your green background. And um, it's, relati yeah, it's relatively in focus. I really want to get it tack sharp on the eye really. It's not bang on the eye, but you can see there is still plenty of detail in there. So um, yeah, as I say, I really didn't expect to have, to have the opportunity to set all this up because insects are so skittish and you know, you can barely get them to sit still for, you know, a second, let alone, I mean, this has been like half an hour probably at least, I reckon I've been doing this getting photos and just playing around, you know, moving the flash around and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, taking more photos because they didn't quite go in focus, that sort of thing. So anyway, I hope it's been uh, useful and interesting to you. So as you can see, there are lots of different ways that you can use uh, lighting to illuminate your subject, your macro subject with this Canon MPE 65 millimeter lens. Um, because obviously it's very expensive if you're going to buy the dedicated Canon uh, flash system for this. As I said, I think it's around 700 to a thousand pounds. So if you do already own one of these flashes, um, it's going to obviously work out really well for you. They're a very versatile piece of kit. Um, but even if you didn't own one and you bought one, it's still going to be significantly cheaper than the Canon system. And if you want to go really cheap, then you could go for just using a regular flash on a cable and some sort of diffuser on the end. So there's a lot of, lot of different ways that you can um, you know, skin a cat if you like. And I'm sure I could probably rig something up. So this is closer to the end here, but I haven't really got around to that yet. Uh, actually, there was another crazy idea which I came up with. And I won't construct it now, but what I did, I will just show you thing though what I did was again I moved the tripod collar around and then I attached this bendy thing here and much like how I showed you how I put the flash here so imagine you know the bits in between where I, I put this on here and then I attached the flash piece I mean this was a really heavy piece of metal to attach and it did make uh, the cable bit unstable when it was sat on the ground so it was a bit of a a crazy concept but it's something I wanted to try out and you can try it out too if you want there is actually um, a, a lesser heavy duty version of this because this is the heavy duty version so it's quite heavy and it's you know quite stiff but there is one that's not quite as heavy as this but I don't know how much weight it would hold. If it would, maybe it wouldn't be un, maybe it wouldn't be suitable for you know this idea. So hopefully that's given you some ideas for different ways of lighting your subjects with this macro lens. Some things for you to experiment with. Maybe you'd like to you know 
acquire some of these pieces and, and rig it up and see how you get on or maybe you've got your own ideas I'd be really interested if you write in the comments what you thought or what you think of the ideas I've come up with and demonstrated in this video and the results that I've got I'm still uh, a very new channel I've only got uh, I think 32 subscribers so every subscriber really means a lot to me. It's, it's really nice to see when I've got a, another new subscriber, even if you know, it's just one or two here and there, it's a really good feeling to get that. So please do give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment. I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.